Back then it was really cheap to buy stuff. People were just chucking it all out then, you know, kind of literally I'd find stuff in, in the street and things. <laughs> you know, you kind of learn their little quirks and their the unique sort of things that they could do and, and, um, and just really get into them. <laughs> I mean, I think I was really into Brian Eno and, and, that, and the German stuff. And there's a guy, Connie Plank, that was involved with loads of that kind of 70s German um, stuff, which I really liked. He had a system whereby he had tape loops set up on a mixer. So each channel would have its own unique tape loop running. And these, these kind of ideas where you're really pushing the equipment to new ways back, you know, back in, the, in that era when, when it wasn't so easy to do. When, you're, when you've got certain fixed sort of limitations on what you've, what you've got at hand, you have to think of interesting ways to kind of make it unique and to, to make it your own. So I did this album called 20 Systems, which was 20 different synths basically, and each track was just using one synth per track, and, and it kind of mapped out the, diff, the sort of progression of synths from the 60s through 70s to the 80s. So there was one for each year basically going through. But it was really good because you got into each system just for while you're working on one track at a time. And it's nice to have that limitation sometimes. So this is a Oberheim 4 voice and it's from, I guess, sort of 1975 or something. And it was the first polyphonic synthesizer, which means you can play chords on it. So each of these is a different voice that you can layer up and when you hold down four notes, it plays all four of those voices at the same time. Bulky way of doing something that's really simple to do now, but back then it was like the only way they could think of doing it. This is kind of a really weird polysynth that was made in the late 70s by EMS, so it's English. Like every single thing about it is kind of wrong and, and done differently. For example, the all the knobs kind of go backwards so that they start at 10. Oh no, well, zero is there and it goes up to 10 like that. They only made about 30. They weren't very popular. They got really bad reviews when it came out and just, you know. But I kind of like it because it's so quirky and unusual. People working with this equipment originally when it first came out have kind of moved on from the equipment and just kind of abandoned all their old synths and, and forgotten about them and then sort of realised maybe after, after a while that they've kind of regretted that and they wanted to kind of get their hands back on them. And, and then obviously there is a very healthy industry for new manufacturers making modular stuff and boutique companies still kind of thriving really. Something you, I would never have guessed would happen like five or ten years ago. There's actually probably more modular manufacturers now than ever. So, you know, that, that's kind of amazing to me really. <laughs>